Hey folks, how's it going? Thanks for checking out the video. I'm Johnny. Today we're going to be looking at another ultimate, ultimate calculation group script. Today's solution is looking at dynamic filtering. If you haven't already seen my previous video featuring the ultimate, ultimate dynamic measures calculation group script, you should definitely check it out. I'll stick a link for you here. This video is inspired by a video posted by Patrick from Guy in a Cube a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen that yet, you definitely should do. I'll put a link in the comments. The scenario demonstrated by Patrick was the ability to dynamically filter a measure using a slicer to select the filtering value. Let's take a quick look at Patrick's solution. Firstly, I just wanted to show you my data set. A very basic and very small sample data set showing four different fruits and then three columns with various values. Those values are just arbitrary values for demonstration purposes that don't really mean anything. I've created three explicit measures to represent the values contained in those three columns. The Patrick solution, he created this disconnected table containing the value what to filter by, a label for each value and a sort order. He also created this measure, which controls the filter. By adding the filter measure to a matrix, you can then use a slicer to control which values are filtered. So this will show all values that are up to 10,000. 1000, up to 100, up to 10. And this works exactly the way he wanted it to. Back on YouTube, there was a comment under the video asking whether or not it was possible to create this solution using a calculation group instead. Now, you folks know I love a good calculation group, so I figured I'd take on the challenge. And of course, if it's possible to create a solution with a calculation group, it's also possible to create a tabular editor script to be able to create the calculation group. So that's exactly what I did. First, let's take a look at the script. So I'm in tabular editor now, and the first thing the script needs to do is set a few variables. So we need a name for our calculation group, a name for the column within the calculation group, and then this next variable is an array. This allows you to set the range values you'd like to be able to filter by. I actually want to filter to up to 10,000, so let's add another value now. And if I run the script, you'll see my calculation groups created over here. If I expand this, look at my calculation items. see here the DAX that's being created. Let's save the changes back to the model and see it in action. So my slicer on the left hand side here, you can see it's using the filter value from my calculation group. So does it work? sure does. What I can even do, change which values in my matrix. So I'm filtering by value one at the minute, add value two instead. And we still get the results we're expecting. In fact, that actually provides more flexibility than Patrick's original solution, which only allows you to do that filtering by one specific measure. But what if I want to have multiple values in my matrix? In that case, I start to get some funny results. If I want to filter value 1 by less than 1000, I should expect this row for oranges to disappear. But that's not the case. 
I instead end up with these strange blanks dotted across my matrix. And the reason for that is that my calculation group has been applied across all measures, not just across value one. And this is exactly the reason that Patrick didn't use a calculation group in his original solution. I even had a bit of dialogue on Twitter with him to confirm this. But it got me thinking, is there something I could do to not only dynamically control the value of the filter, but also which measure the filter's been applied to? And here is where my ultimate, ultimate calculation group for dynamic value filtering comes into play. So let's head into Tableau Editor again. So this ultimate, ultimate script has a few more variables to set. And in actual fact, what this will do is create two calculation groups. One that controls the value you'd like to filter by, like before, but also a second one that's going to control which measure that filter is actually applied to. As before, we need to set variables so that we have a name for the calculation groups as well as a name for the column that's going to be appearing there. And this calculation group also utilises a measure that helps you apply the filtering to your visual. One difference here, you have to actually select which measures you want to be included. So let's go select values 1 to 3. Uh, as before, I actually want 10,000 here as well. And let's run the script. As you can see, I've got two calculation groups that have been created. And one thing that I think is worthwhile calling out is one special property that needs to be set, which is this calculation group precedence. Now the calculation group which controls which measure the filter has been applied to is set to zero. But for the actual value of the filter, it's set to one. That's because we need to control the order in which the calculation groups are applied. We need to know which measure to apply our filter to before we apply that filter. But don't worry, the script takes care of that calculation group precedence for you. Again, let's move those changes back to a model and check it out. One important difference with this technique. On our matrix, in the filter pane, we need to apply this filter selection measure and set it to is not blank. Now with multiple measures on my matrix, if I select that I want my filter value to apply to value one, then when I do this by less than 1000, it should filter out the oranges row. It does. And less than 100 filters out the apples. So on. Um, can apply that to value 2 as well. I have pears, oranges, bananas, and apples. And finally, I can do that for value 3 as well. Now that's bananas. <laughs> so, more good fun with calculation groups. This might be a bit of a niche use case, but it's still good to rise to the challenge and get a bit creative to create a solution. As always, I'll make both versions of that script available on my GitHub page, and I'll put a link in the description as well. And let me know what you think. Can you see yourself using this technique? I hope that's been useful, and maybe you can come up with a use for my ultimate, ultimate. There it is again. Maybe you can come up with a use for my all, all, um, this calculation group script. As always, if you've got any questions or feedback, don't be afraid to head into that comment section below. If you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in following along for more content about Power BI, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you next time.